Is climate changing and does it pose an existential threat to humanity? That's what I want to talk about in this video. To help me address these questions, I'm calling on an expert. He's not a scientist. He's just a regular kind of guy, a man of his times. His name is Utsi, and he's about 5,300 years old. Let me introduce you to him. Utsi lived in what's now northern Italy, basically the Alpine region. We know a fair amount about him. Genetically, he's related to the people from Sardinia. So he's part of the population that was there before the probably the Indo-European, what became the Italic peoples, moved into that region. We know what his last meal was. We know he had tattoos. Uh, and we know he had an arrow point stuck in his back, lodged in his back, which at the minimum contributed to his death, although he may have succumbed to other causes. But that was probably what killed him. Now, why do we know so much about him? Because he was a mummy. His body was preserved for over 5,000 years after his death. He may have died up in the Alps right where he was found, or maybe he was buried there by his friends. We, we don't really know. Uh, but there was his body. And as the glaciers receded in that region, his body was exposed. A couple of German hikers found it. And the rest, as they say, is history. Now, Utzi, just through his mere existence, basically answers both questions. The first question he answers is, the climate changing? And the obvious response is yes. Utzi was uncovered because of glacial retreat, because the climate in that region, the Alpine region of Italy, is getting warmer. And as it got warmer, the glaciers shrank. They melted, retreated, as it's usually known. So that's the answer to the first question. Yes, it's getting warmer. But Utsi also addresses the second question. Is that climate change an existential threat to humanity? That's what we hear all the time. Indeed, it appears that the Earth itself is facing what we're going to call tonight an existential threat from climate change. Now, what does the term existential threat actually mean, you ask? Honestly, we don't know, but it sounds absolutely terrifying. So watch carefully. That climate change is real, is an existential threat to our country and the entire planet. If NATO is about the common defense, the biggest existential threat is climate. This is climate change. It really is the existential threat. We're going to have to address the most existential threat to our nation in the world. Climate change. On climate change, the greatest existential threat that we face. That we are facing a climate crisis. It represents an existential threat to who we are as human beings. So is there an existential threat? And what does Utsi tell us about it? Well, on the one hand, as I've already said, he tells us that climate change is real, that the planet is warming. The glaciers in the Alpine region of Italy are receding. That's why we found his body. But he also tells us something else, because his body was preserved. That means it's been basically under ice for over 5,000 years and fairly well preserved during that period. Now, what that means is, I mean, it's not as if, you know, Utsi was being tracked by people who had shot him in the back and he went up there and he hid under an existing glacier. Obviously, that's not what happened. Utsi died or was buried near there by people. And then it was probably the late fall. And then winter came and he was covered with snow, which preserved his body from the animals. And it must have been colder the next year because the snow maybe didn't melt all the way. And shortly after that, the glaciers started moving down and his body was covered for over 5,000 years, about 5,300 years, give or take a century. Now, what does that tell us then? Well, it tells us that when Utsi was alive, it was as warm in that region then as it is today, probably warmer. 
the fact that he was there also tells us he was trying to move through that pass, which means even though it was probably late in the fall, early in the winter, you know, he had, they had a rough idea of the seasons. They maybe didn't have it as exact a calendar as we have today, but he obviously thought he could move through that area despite the fact that it was so high of an altitude. He didn't expect to be covered by a glacier. He expected to be able to move through that region, probably because he'd moved through that region before and he knew where he was going. This is a man, he was in his early to mid 40s. I mean, he had experience. He knew what he was about. He knew where he was going. You live in the Alps, you know the weather and you have to learn the climate. You know what passes are open at what times of year. But he obviously also miscalculated because he died. Now, he may have died because of the arrow wound. He may have died because of exposure. Nobody can really say with you know, metaphysical certainty. But whatever happened to him, he then was covered by ice, which would, to him, be an abnormal situation. In other words, if he knew it was always covered by a glacier, he wouldn't have tried to get through the pass. So I would suppose that he thought he could move through that region at that time of year in safety, which turned out not to be true. And he ends up under ice for over five millennia. So if we look at Utzi's situation, well, yeah, OK, we know the climate's getting warmer because he was exposed by melting glaciers. We also know it was as warm then as it is now, maybe even a little warmer. So 5,500 years ago, 5,300 years ago, 5,400 years ago, 5,600 years ago, it was as warm then as it is now. Did humanity disappear from the planet between five and 6,000 years ago? No. Humanity actually retreated a little bit because the glaciers were moving and it made it more difficult to survive. When it was warmer, humanity was thriving relatively speaking. So Utzi tells us a lot of things. He, he confirms the fact that the planet is warming, which is what exposed his body. But the fact that he was there also tells us it was as warm then as it is now. And the obvious question is, if it was as warm then as it is now, were they burning huge amounts of fossil fuels? Were there millions of cars driving around spewing exhaust? Were there big factories punching out hydrocarbons? Of course not. There was no industry. This is long before the Industrial Revolution. This is almost before the Agricultural Revolution. This we're talking about the Copper Age here. I mean, they're just starting to you know mine copper and use it. Humanity wasn't in peril because it was that warm. As I said, what imperiled humanity was the spread of the glaciers that came subsequent to what, was, what we saw in that period, and that's what buried Utzi's body. So why are we in such a panic today? If it was as warm then or warmer as it is now, and humanity did not face an existential threat back in that period. So these are the things that Utzi tells us. We should listen to them. Climate change advocates are always talking about following the science, the experts. You know, one of the sciences is geology. And I was fortunate enough to make that my science of choice when I was an undergraduate. What did I learn in my geology courses? I learned a lot of interesting things. But one of the things I learned was that the Earth was 4.2 billion years old. Now, today, they say the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. You know, the science changes. You know, what was in my geology book 50 years ago almost is now dated. They were off by 300 million years. I guess that's not a lot, you know, in, in ge geologic time, it's not a lot. In historical time, that's an eternity. 300 million years they were off. But what else did I learn? What I learned was that during those 4.2 billion years, the Earth was constantly changing. And as the Earth changed, the climate changed. And sometimes it was the climate that was actually changing the Earth. The climate for 4.5 billion years has constantly been changing. 
If you went back 4 billion years, the climate would look nothing like it is today. And we know that. Everybody knows that. The other thing I learned was the concept that the geologic forces we see at play on the planet today, for example, weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, things like that, also occurred in the past. We, can, we assume that. That's the scientific assumption. Even though we don't have historical records from 100,000 years ago, geology is based on the assumption that 100,000 years ago, there were volcanoes, there were earthquakes, there was uh, dramatic weather, there were hurricanes and storms and, and ice and rain and snow. That's what science is all about, that the forces at work today were the forces that are at work then. And you can see that in Utsi. You know, we see that he, it was as warm when he was alive as it is today. And there's no industry involved there. It just was that warm. And we know that the climate changed because he ends up getting covered by glaciers. I mean, that's what he tells us, and that's what the science tells us. Now, Otsi is just one historical example you can point to that suggests that, you know, climate change isn't something new. There are others I could go into, but I won't. I'll just mention them. There's the whole question of Doggerland. Uh, we know that thousands of years ago, what's now the North Sea was inhabited. People lived there. There were villages. There were little clans and civilizations in the area that's now the floor bed of the North Sea. It's called Doggerland. That area was exposed because of ice. The ice was holding the water back because the climate was cooler. When the climate warmed up, as it did, which is why we see Utsi moving through the Alps late in the year, sea levels rose, and what was Doggerland, as we call it, became the North Sea. It's all underwater now. If you want to see the, uh, the, the detritus of civilization in Doggerland, you have to use dredges to get down there. That's how they found that it was there. Fishermen started bringing stuff up, you know, artifacts that at first maybe they thought they were dumped there, but then they realized there were people who had lived there. This whole area had been a thriving area of agriculture and civilization. And the people, what happened to the people there? Were they all killed? They probably migrated, you know, to what's now England or down to the Netherlands, over to Denmark, up to Norway, who knows? It probably didn't happen overnight. Uh, that, that's just one example. Another example is uh, Alexandria, Egypt, which today is threatened by global warming because of rising sea levels. You can search on Google to Alexandria, climate change. You'll find all these articles about how the, the city is under pressure because of climate change and rising sea levels. But if you know the history of Alexandria, for example, if you are interested in uh, underwater archaeology and you want to go and see, say, Cleopatra's palace in the area of ancient Alexandria in its historic period, you know, Cleopatra's you know, roughly 2,000 years ago, you have to be a scuba diver because all those ancient parts of Alexandria are underwater. And they've been underwater since the 4th century. In the 4th century, there was a, a big event that killed 50,000 people in Alexandria when the sea suddenly retreated, and then it suddenly came back in a, in a tidal wave, basically, and, and overran parts of the city, killed 50,000 people. So Alexandria's been under pressure from rising sea levels, not just be now because of climate change. This has been happening since, since the fourth century. They've been under pressure from rising sea levels for 1,600 years, at least, and maybe it went back before that. We just don't know enough to know. So if you look at the history and science, the conceptual parts of geology, it doesn't look to me, I would not draw the conclusion, I don't think Utsi would either, that humanity faces an existential threat. If humanity faced an existential threat from the current climate, how warm it is today and how it's likely to get warmer by a, a bit over the next century. If that was enough to put 
the lives of humanity at risk. Let's say you wouldn't have been part of a thriving proto-civilization in the Alpine region of Northern Italy. That's just a fact. The fact that he was there to be buried by that glacier tells us it was as warm then as it is now. And there was no industry then. You can't claim that the climate was warm then because of anything we did. So how do we know if the climate's warmer today that it's because of our actions? In theory, you can look at that. You can say, yes, the scientist says it is. There's models and there's all these other things. But when it was just as warm without those things five, 6,000 years ago, you can't conclude with certainty that that's what's happening. And even if it is from something we're doing, the fact that it was that warm then and humanity did not disappear means we're not under an existential threat now. That's the science. That's the history. And if you just read about Utsi, you'll see it's all there. The answer to both questions. Is the planet warming? Yes. Is it an existential threat? No. So what do you think? You think the planet's warming? Do you think there's real climate change? Do you think whatever's happening poses an existential threat? Are you convinced? Let me know in a comment. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. And until the next time, keep fighting.